Let's talk play call. Frank Reich, offensive coordinator Thomas Brown of the Carolina Panthers, need to start thinking like a defensive coordinator or else the Panthers' offense will continue to be boxed in. Right? This is, this is like when the cops need to start thinking like criminals. You need to start thinking like the people you're going up against and try to do something they don't see coming. The next time a defense is surprised by something the Panthers' offense does will be the first time a defense is surprised by something the Panthers' offense does. And without surprise... Without, without misdirection, without getting them moving one way so you can move the other, without that, this offense isn't talented enough to have success. Surprise is the talent equalizer. And right now, they are unbelievably predictable, which you can do when you're more talented. Right? Nobody's surprised when Tyreek Hill runs a deep route. Tyreek Hill is faster than you. That's why he can do that. No one is surprised when Derrick Henry runs up the middle. Derrick Henry is bigger, stronger, and more powerful than you. That's why he can do that. But when you're not faster, when you're not bigger, stronger, more powerful, when you're not more talented, you need to surprise them. Right? When the the whole defense thinks you're running the ball, so they pack into the, the, the box and you throw it, that's how your talent can be overcome. Your lack of can be overcome. I'm going to use a more more traditional and obvious example. When a high school or college team is severely out-talented, do you know what they do? They run the triple option. Yeah. Why? Because they can trick you, right? Who has the ball? I don't know. Who has it? He has it? I have it? You have it? Because if the defense knew that guy has the ball, they're too. They're not good enough to, to keep you from making the tackle. So they try to confuse you. I'm going to fake it to him, fake it to him, fake it to him. I'm running around the backside. Because that's a way you can overcome a lack of ability. Right now, the Panthers have a lack of ability. Their wide receivers aren't explosive enough. Their offensive line isn't moving them off the ball. Their running backs aren't making guys miss. That's not to say they're bad players. It's to say they need the play calling to help them out. Now, you can't run the triple option in the NFL. That would be ridiculous. But you do need misdirection. You do need you do need unpredictable shots downfield. That is the equalizer. Right? This these Panthers wide receivers are not good enough to beat you deep on third and twelve. Do you know why? Because the secondary is expecting you to go deep on third and twelve. But guess what? They might be good enough to beat beat you deep on second and seven. On third and two, right? When when everybody thinks, oh, look at this. It's third and two. They're going to run the ball to try to pick up the first, so we should be ready to come up and crash and support the run. You want to go deep then? When they don't expect it? That's what's, that, that's what's missing in the secret sauce of the Panthers. And it's what was missing last week. We said the same thing. They hyped up that they had this creative and innovative offense, but under wraps, right? During the whole preseason, we're keeping it vanilla. We're keeping it bland. We're keeping it basic. We're not showing anything. Were you not showing anything because you didn't have anything to show? So we're we're just running our generic stuff because we don't want to let everybody know what we're going to do. Two two games in, are you still hiding? (laughs) Are they going to, whoa, surprise, week seven? We've we've been running vanilla offenses for six weeks to set you up. Watch out. It's going to be the most dramatic reveal of all time. They overhyped it, and, and they're under-delivering. I, 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 and, and the funny part was, uh, Dennis and I were sitting there watching the game together. Graham Hill, who sometimes produces this show, was sitting with us as well. We're watching the game, and... I was saying out loud, every non-traditional deep ball down in distance, I'd love to see a deep ball here, right? First and 10, I'd love to see a deep ball here. First and 15, I'd love to see a deep ball here. Second and two, love to see a deep ball here. Third and two, fourth and two. I didn't care what it was, as long as it wasn't third and long. I want to see a play action. I want to see a, a trick play. I wanted to see something. 
I kid you not, this is how embarrassing and how ridiculous the Panthers offense got at times. The, the ball completed to DJ Chark, right? It was it was one of the better plays of the night. Uh, Bryce Young was on the move, threw it across his body, hit DJ Chark on a crosser. DJ Chark caught the ball, angled to the sideline, picked up another four or five yards. Dennis and I were actually arguing if it was a 14-yard pass or a 15-yard pass because if it was a 15-yard pass, yep. it would have been the longest pass play from scrimmage up to that point this season. That's a real conversation that happened. That did happen. That's the longest pass play of the year. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was only 14 yards. He went out of bounds. No, I think it was 15. Oh, that's the long. It's 15, the longest pass play of the year. 15 yards. You were a game and a half in. That's not okay. It, 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 the play calling needs to be more creative because the players need the help. The players need the help. Find out where, like, like in what situations do it. That's why I'm saying they need to uh, think like a defensive coordinator. There's something called self scout, right? And what that is is you look at your own tendencies, right? How many times first play of a drive are we running the ball? If it's like 80, percent you're running the ball on the first play of a drive. I need you to throw a darn pass, and not just any pass. Something something downfield. Push the ball. Four verts, right? Play like you're you're an eight year old in Madden. Four verts, four verts, four verts, over and over and over again, because you like chucking it deep. Maybe not that obvious, but you get what I'm saying. The play calling lacks creativity, it lacks innovation, it lacks enthusiasm. Do you think like this this is this is what I want? This is the the mentality I want. Do you think at any point in time, Frank Reich called the play into the headset and turned around to somebody near him and said, "Watch this." Yeah, I want him to. I want him to be that guy. I, I'll, I'll put it to you like this: I was a, a quarterback in college, um, and and at the University of Delaware, and we signaled in all of our plays. Okay, mm-hmm. so like you, you had three guys lined up on the sideline, looking like they're lifeguards at the beach, right, doing all the arm movements, signaling. And what that allowed us to do is, like when I was the backup quarterback early in my career, um, I wasn't a signaler, and I could just I would sit there and I would watch. And you'd be, because you're on the bench, right? A defensive player might be standing next to you. Every once in a while, you'd be watching the plays, trying to see what we're going to call, and then you'd go, ooh. And you'd turn to the defensive player next to you and go, get ready for this one. And this one is, this one's a sp- like, you know, hey, watch. And you'd name the receiver, right? You're like, Watch watch uh, Phil going deep. And then the defensive player would even get excited, right? Because they feel like they have some insider information. Like, oh, okay. Ooh. they get up to the sideline and watch. Do you think an offensive player, like uh, if Andy Dalton has the headset on on the sideline, do you think at any point in time he turned to a defensive player next to him and is like, hey, don't miss this one. Watch, watch Adam Thielen. He's going to run a five-yard hitch. <laughs> oh, what? Like take his headset off, turn to the defensive player, Get ready. We're about to see Jonathan Mingo run a square in. Seven step. Seven step square out. Oh! No, right? There's nothing there that that has gotten everybody excited. And by the way, like Adam Thielen, good player. There's a lot of Adam Thielen in this offense. Mingo ended up with eight targets, Thielen's nine. But there were times that it seemed like Adam Thielen was the only wide receiver out there. They were running the playmaker screens for Adam Thielen. I call them playmaker screens, right? The ones where it's like, just get the ball to them in space. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like LaVisca Chenault, I, but Jonathan Mingo, maybe someone with a little bit more explosiveness than Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen's a good player. I really like Adam Thielen. The playmaker screens, the ones where it's like, hey, we just got to get this guy a touch. We just got to get him the ball in space. Maybe someone that could score with it. Adam Thielen's going to get you seven yards. Seven yards is a great play. Occasionally, you want 25. Occasionally, you want reverse field 45. Mm-hmm. And the Saints, like guys like Rashid Shahid, guys like Chris Olave, they had that kind of pop, and there just wasn't anything for the, the Panthers. DJ Chark was, was supposed to maybe be that guy coming back from injury. One target, one catch, 15 yards, which at the time was the longest pass completion of the season when he made that catch. 
I don't know, if you got one target, one catch, 15 yards, maybe you go back to him. He did draw an OPI. Okay. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, the defensive pass. That's okay. another positive. OPI. Yeah. Maybe try it again. On a shot you, down the side. You get a 15-yard positive play. You get even, even further than that on the uh, the, the uh, pass interference. Mm-hmm. Positive play. I don't know. If every time you throw it to this guy, it's a positive play, see how long you can keep the streak going. Maybe. I might be a little crazy on that one. Correct me if I'm wrong.